Greetings. This Bible study is going to be on the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. Who really killed Jesus? I know many of the churches teach that it was the Romans, and some even say it was the Roman Catholic Church. So, Matthew 26, chapter, and chapter 27. We're going to skip around a little bit if you want to read the entire, both chapters, by all means, do so to prove that I'm not pulling verses out of context. I hope you're using your King James Bible. Let the Bible be our final authority and dispels man's doctrines. So who really killed Jesus, his trial and crucifixion? All right, Matthew 26 and verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who is called Caiaphas. Are these Catholic priests? Uh, no, they're sure not. Verse 4. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. That doesn't sound like the Romans, does it? But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. All right, let's skip down. All right, hopefully you don't, you all know that Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. If you don't know that, um, you need to read the Bible, the whole thing, from Genesis to Revelation. I know churches will teach you that parts of it applies to the Jews, other parts apply to the church. Uh, no, the whole Bible applies to every believer in Christ. And you can find salvation in the New Testament alone, but you'll never fully understand the New Testament without a working knowledge of the Old. The New Testament is the fulfillment of of the Old Testament. So, Matthew 26, 26. We're skipping, we're skipping down some stuff. This is the Last Supper, okay? And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He's not talking about a cracker that a priest blesses and transubstantiation or whatever the Catholics call it, so. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sang, I'm sorry, and when they had sung an hymn, they went out, unto the Mount of Olives. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. I love Peter. Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Three times. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, said, likewise also said all the disciples, Oh, boy. All right, let's skip down to verse 47. And while he yet spake lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves. Uh, a stave is a 
a stick, okay? You could beat somebody to death with a stave. Um, and with him a, okay. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Sorry, these are not Catholic priests. I'm sorry, they're Jewish priests, okay? These people were from the chief priests and elders of the people. Okay, are they Romans? Possibly. But they were from the chief Jewish priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he, hold him fast. This is where the mafia gets their kiss of death. You know, they kiss them. It's, this is where they get it from. Exactly, right here. Judas Iscariot, the kiss of death. You ever see that on the mafia movies, you know? Verse 49. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Well, when you read the account here in Luke, you find out this was Peter that did this. Peter was ready to fight for Jesus for, with his life. I mean, you're talking a great multitude, and it's just Peter. You know? And struck a servant of the Catholic priest? No. And struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. You know, put the sword back in the sheath. He didn't say throw it away or get rid of it. He said put it back to where it belongs. You know, Peter didn't understand. This is what's supposed to happen, right? Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. And he's talking about, you know, people that live by the sword. You know, um, evil people. You know, criminals. Criminals live by the sword, sort of. You know, they live by the gun, they'll die by the gun. Um, verse 53. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be so? I'm sorry, that thus it must be. In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with sword and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. Jesus was in the Jewish temple, teaching. Funny, they didn't go after him when he was there in front of all the people. No, 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 no. They come after him at night when he's all, uh, alone with the disciples, right? Verse 56. But all this was done that the scripture of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest. This is not a Catholic priest. Look up Caiaphas in the Jewish Encyclopedia. This is not a Catholic priest. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Okay? But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. Does this sound like the Romans? I don't think so. You know, this is that King James Bible that the Baptist churches all say that are, you know, is perfect and, you know, perfect. Perfect. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. But found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet they found none. And at the last came two false witnesses and said, 
This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. In other words, he didn't say a word. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Uh, to adjure means to, you know, I want you to swear to tell us the truth. You know, when they're when you adjure somebody, you're 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 asking them to to tell the truth before the Lord, right? I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then said the high, uh, then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Okay. Uh, all right, let's go skip to uh, the next chapter, number chapter 27. I don't want to make this a two-hour Bible study. So they took him at night, right? All right, so let's go to uh, Matthew 27, verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Nothing about the Romans here, right? And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius, the airline pilot, the governor. Oh, I'm sorry. And delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Uh, you didn't know that. Pilot worked for uh, Delta, did you? No, never mind. Uh, so, Pontius Pilate was the Roman appointed governor. Okay? Now, this is the first time we've had all this stuff. It's always been the Jewish high priest. Now he, they take him to the Roman governor. Uh, let's see, verse 3. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? You know, see thou to that. In other words, so what? You know, big deal. We don't care. You know, that's the modern translation. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple. Mm. That's where he got the silver. That's where he left the silver. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. So here it is. They can hire false witnesses to lie, condemn Jesus to death for, for, for lying, and they're worried about putting silver back in the, the treasury of the temple because they had paid somebody to kill an innocent man. Hmm. What did Jesus say to these, these uh, Pharisees? All Pharisees are Jews, not all Jews are Pharisees, but... But what did he say to the Pharisees? Uh, let's take a look. All right, Pharisees are a denomination of the Jews. Matthew 23 and verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes. Scribes were the copyists of the Bible. They were, the, they, they were experts in the Hebrew language. They copied the Bible. Back in these days, they didn't have a printing press to make books. They had to copy the scrolls on animal skins, which was vellum, okay, and uh, they were experts in Hebrew and the Bible. They, you know, when you write the Bible a, a hundred times, I mean, you you pretty much know what's in it, right? And the Pharisees were 
the chief, they were among the chief priests of the Jewish temple. Matthew 23:15, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. Compass means to travel around. You know, you've heard of a compass. A compass points in all directions. You know, it points north. But, you know, you've got northeast, southwest on a compass. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. That's a believer. You know, they, they go across the sea and land to, to make a, you know, an, a fellow believer. Hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Twofold. That means you, you're going to make him twice the child of hell than you are. Woe well unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it's nothing. It is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. In other words, if you swear by the temple, it doesn't mean nothing. But if you swear by the gold of the temple, you've got to keep that, that promise. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And also, whoso, and whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. In other words, mercy and faith and judgment, they neglected that, but oh boy, you better pay your tithes. Sounds like um, t uh, televangelists on TV nowadays, doesn't it? Here's my, here's my punchline. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to falsely accuse somebody and condemn him and put him to death, but yet they're worried about putting silver back into the treasury because they, they used it to, to pay somebody to, to kill. You know, they, they, they paid Judas to, to betray Jesus with this to, so that they could kill him. So it's okay to kill somebody with, by false accusing, but God forbid you take the, the silver and put it back into the treasury of the money, yeah, into the temple's money, you know? Yeah, they, they strain at a gnat, and then they swallow the camel. So, you know, don't put don't put bloody silver back in the temple's thing, but it's okay to murder somebody. I thought that was in the Ten Commandments of the Torah. I thought that was Torah keeping. Thou shalt not kill. I guess they never read that part, huh? So, and the chief priests, not the Catholics, took the silver pieces, Matthew 27, 6, and the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in, whereof that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, that's Jeremiah, that's the Greek rendering for Jeremiah, saying, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. Okay, not Rome. And gave them for the potter's field as the Lord, Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor. Ah, now we're at the Romans, the Roman governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. You know, he's asking him, are you the king of the Jews? 
And Jesus is saying, well, if you say so, you know, you, you're saying it. You say it. You're saying it. You know, that's what you say. Okay? And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Who? Jesus is being accused of the Jewish chief priests and the elders. He answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, in, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable person called Barabbas. Whereof, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew, for he, Pilate, for he knew that for envy they, the Jewish priests, for he knew that they, that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? See, even Pilate's wife knew that Jesus was a just man. Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Barabbas um, did an insurrection and was a murderer. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded everybody that they should ask for the murderer and destroy Jesus. I don't read anything here about the Romans, do you? The governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye, will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. It doesn't sound like Pilate wants to kill him, does it? Why? What evil hath he done? When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, it's like a riot, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Hmm. All right, let's read the parallel account, Luke chapter 23, starting in verse 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him, Jesus, and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Now this is a very serious accusation. These people are saying that Jesus... Now tribute is taxes. They're accusing Christ of telling them not to pay tax their taxes to, to Caesar, to the Romans, and that he is the king over and above the Roman Empire. Okay? Let's see what Jesus said. All right. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 15. Then went the Pharisees, now, Pharisees are Jews, okay? All Pharisees are Jews. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him the, their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore... What thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute 
unto Caesar or not? In other words, should we pay taxes to the Caesar, to the emperor of Rome? Hmm. Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said, and he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? Well, if it's a Roman coin, whose image is going to be on it? Verse 21. They said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. In other words, these Roman coins, give them to the Romans. Give the things to Caesar that belongs to Caesar, and give the things to God that belongs to God. So the Jews that were accusing Christ, okay, in Luke 23, verse 2, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. They were lying. Matter of fact, they were accusing Christ of treason against Rome, and being a tax evader. And he was nothing of the sort. They're lying so that they can kill him. And they're worried about putting 30 pieces of silver back in the treasury of the temple. Oh. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. In other words, if you say so. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they said, The more fear, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Jewry. Not jewelry. Not gold that you wear around your neck. Jewry, which is Jews. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged in the Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who him, himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Herod wanted to be entertained with a magic trick. You know, Jesus... Uh, healing the sick, and, you know, those kind of things. Then he questioned him in many words, but he answered him nothing. Isn't that interesting? Jesus didn't tell Herod, repent and believe the gospel. No, he didn't say a word to Herod. Nothing. Herod's fate is sealed. Herod was, the whole family was evil. Then he questioned him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his man of war, sat him at naught, that means nothing, and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. Enmity is hatred. They didn't like each other. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, and have found, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, uh, to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one of them, one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Sedition is 
you know, it's riding against Rome. It's trying to overthrow Rome. And he was a murderer. Okay? Pilate, therefore, verse 30, Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified, and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them, unto him, that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. Okay, parallel account, John chapter 18, verse 29. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation have ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, a malefactor is somebody that does bad things, if he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? You know, did others tell you I'm king of the Jews, or are you saying this by yourself? You know, Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. Ooh. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? I mean, it's pretty plain. It, it was the Jews that delivered Jesus to Pilate. Okay? And they were the ones that did the false witnesses. Verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Romans? No. Then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest, that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, not the Romans, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Ooh. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. This is 19, John 19. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore an officer saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Ooh. The Jews answered him, not the Romans. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore 
heard that, that saying, he was the more afraid. Can you imagine that? An unsaved Roman governor, Pilate, was afraid. But the Jews? Oh no. He was the, and when, and when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again in, into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus, Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Listen to this carefully. Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. See, it was the Jews that delivered Jesus unto Pilate. And Jesus saying, Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. The Jews that delivered Jesus to Pilate have the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. Does that sound like the Romans killed Jesus? Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out saying, But the Jews cried out saying, If thou let this man go, Thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. You see, the Jews said, Oh, this guy says he's a king. Christ says he's a king. And if you let him go, you're guilty of treason against Caesar, the head of Rome, of whom you're a governor. That means you're guilty of treason which the penalty for treason would be death. So Pilate wanted to release Jesus, and the Jews are accusing Pilate, you let him go, we're accusing you of treason before the, the, the king of Rome. Pilate is now between a rock and a hard place. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. Does that sound like the Romans killed Jesus? All right. Still not convinced? Uh, let's take a look at a few other verses. How about John chapter 5, verse 16? And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Verse 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. John 7, 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. How about Acts 9.23? And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. Of course, they're talking about Paul here. Acts 23.12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse. A curse saying they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Hmm. 
Acts 26, 21. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Wow. Still don't believe that the Jews killed Jesus? How about 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14, 15 and 16? For ye brethren became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have loved, suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Ooh, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Okay, 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Do you know what anathema means? It's a Greek word. It means to be cursed. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be cursed. Do the Jews love Jesus? Ah, uh, there's probably a few. I hope you'll take a look at my Messianic Jews, the Trojan Horse, part one. I plan on doing a part two. My computer started acting screwy, so I had to quit in the middle of the pro uh, the study. The computer's been doing that a lot lately. It's been acting all screwy, if you know what I mean. So, all right, well. If you uh, still think the Roman Catholic Church and the Romans killed Jesus, well, just disregard everything that the Bible says. No big deal. And you could falsely accuse the Romans for killing Jesus. They didn't care. Pilate, you better believe Pilate had spies watch Jesus. Because, you know, when you're a, a governor... You want to keep your eyes out on people that you think are going to cause trouble. And there was a lot of people following Christ around. You better believe he had a bunch of different spies watching out, listening to Jesus and what he had to say to make sure he wasn't going to stir up trouble. Can anybody say the NSA, the CIA, FBI, DEA, uh, and all the rest of the alphabet vampires? I'm sure they listen to me making sure I, uh, hanging on my every word. Oh, yeah. Because they hate Jesus. They hate his words. They hate the Bible. They hate Christians. Persecution's coming, people. Persecution's coming. And the churches teach it was the Romans that killed Jesus. No. No. It wasn't the Romans that killed the Christians. Same people that killed Jesus. What can I tell you? All right, well, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, gl glory, and honor to Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In his precious name, this is Chaplain Bob, signing out. <laughs>